Welcome back to Universal Love Law, guys. My name is Maisha, and I'm going to do this video. It's going to be about if you have a third house stellium, okay? And so, um, first of all, stelliums are basically when you have either four or more, and it could be three, too. That's a high influence planets within one of your houses and so your houses is something that an astrologer can look at your chart there's 12 every person on the planet has houses 12 houses and every person on the planet was born at a time where each of their planets align into one of their houses okay and so some of your houses have no planets there or i mean it's really depending and then some of your houses have many, many planets there. And some people have planets spread throughout all their houses. And it's not a big emphasis in all area. I mean, one specific area. But when we're dealing with a stellium, this is someone who specifically has a lot of planets in one house. And we're going to focus on the third house today. Okay, so brief in uh, background of what the third house is. The third house is basically our... Um, it's ruled by Gemini, and it's mutable, and so it's communication, okay? So the third house is ruled by Gemini, but you might have a different um, sign in that house. I have Gemini in my third house because I'm a Pisces rising, but other people, which is the first house, but other people might have Taurus there or might have um, Libra there, Aries there, whatever. Um, so, but let's say your third house has multiple planets meaning either your sun mercury venus uranus pluto whatever so i'm going to go through each planet with you guys okay and so and that way you guys can understand the third house deals with communication close proximity your school your neighborhood your close friends uh cousins um um yeah like childhood uh areas where you grew up those type that type of energy your style of communication th what you learn through your environment how that how your environment uh not more so the home which is the fourth house but more so your exterior environment which is the um community uh and then the way your mind perceives things because the third house deals with the mental realm because the third house is ruled by gemini originally okay and so ultimately and so basically let's start with the sun let's say that you have your son in the third house so this is a person who is um a lot of their purpose and what we see from them is built on communication they might even uh talk about the past a lot uh they might be very original people because these are people who do not uh fade uh or they don't over time adjust to new fashions they're so originally authentically uh designed or like manifested and created to be who they were raised like the energy that they were raised in so like if they were raised in an area where things were very disciplined you know that's something that they will carry out throughout their life and that will be their structure and how their mind is formating thoughts and how they communicate things uh, and, and that's the type of uh, aura that they will have about their self because the sun deals with your aura. The sun deals with your uh, kind of like your energy, um, your purposeful energy and what we're here to do and um, the essence, your soul essence. And so when that soul essence is dropped in the third house, that's a person whose essence reflects their childhood memories, the people that they grew up the, with. Um, the way they were taught how to communicate uh, through their, you know, environment, their living environment, okay? These are people who probably do not leave their home, um, like, when they, they don't, they could live in a house for years and years and years, like, in the same house that they were raised in. Or they have, the same house that they're raised in, their family may still have that house. And they could go over there or that apartment or whatever. Um, these are people who uh, the 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 their. Um, so I don't want to focus more so on the home. So yeah, these are those type of people. Okay, so 
your sun also is your vitality and it is your mission kind of so like when you have your son in your, in the third house this is a person who um uh, consistently is very tapped into the communication style of themselves and they're very influential uh, as far as the way that they speak and the way that they communicate and the way that they put together uh, ideas they're very influential because other people see this person as someone who is is very well gifted and well versed in communication um and that's something that you are consistently um uh working towards is building uh your thoughts in your mind uh on a structure so and this is this is where things could get kind of complicated but it's really mental so like a uh, some person um, the way that they um, communicate or break things down in their mind, uh, it shows to the world, you know. And so they like to talk about pastimes, things. They like to talk about the environment. They're very tapped in tune with the environment, the community. And even on a uh, like a deeper level, they really uh, talk about, they like to talk about what's going on in the world. Third house is connected to the mental realm because it's ruled by Gemini. And it's really a collective conscious um, um, house. And so when a person's son is there, you know, they're tapped into the collective conscious of, you know, the world, the environment, and, and so on. It just, it's a very mental uh, type of person someone who uh, gets into not into a person's psyche but gets into the dialogue with the person and really understands the algorithms of of people in their the way that they they function in things and so um it's not very intense like unless you have like a sun and you know scorpio or something you know like if you have a if you have like okay so i'll break that down so let's say that you have like a water, if you have water in the third house and it's a stellium there also, you know, your communication style will be about the emotions. The environment that you were raised stimulate emotional reactions from you and you um, come off very um, serene. Like people see you as a person that can talk about things with passion, but in an emotional sense from an emotional place like it's always dealing with the um if you think of water it's a calm stillness you know it can be you know really riled up but typically it's like a flow right and so water sons in the third house these are people who you know are they like to communicate from a sense of flow and calmness steadiness you know they're very in tune with other people and they they build connections with communicating with others let's say it's an earth house your practical mind this is someone who is let's say you have earth sun your your sun is earth and it's falling in that and it's and it drops in that uh third house that's someone who's uh, their way of going about things and the way they shine out in life is a practical, stable, mental person or someone who is practically um, a practical communicator, someone who notices a lot, okay? The water, I also want to mention this, the water, third house people, water, sun, third house people, they don't forget things. Things, those memories are very attached to their childhood. They're very attached to their childhood memories and the experiences that they had in their neighborhood or in their school. Like that was a time where they were really awoke and aware. And it really was a lot of subconscious programming when they were younger with that water. OK, but all too, because, um, but yeah, so let's say your earth. So you're very practical when it comes to your form of communication. Uh, you preferred growing up places that made you feel stable. You prefer places that make you feel uh, some sense of steadiness. If things got out of hand or shaky, you probably became unstable. You know what I mean? Like if you if you were around any people or you had cousins that were doing the wrong thing or teaching you the wrong thing, they probably taught you to be very unstable. Or like if you had, you know, your siblings and your friends, and you're hanging out, you know, and they were very practical or you prefer them to be. Chaos can drive a third house sun person. Uh, un, you know, they don't. They prefer not to be around that. 
and if they are around it, it is some sort of uh, monetizing it. Like there's it's some type of like a earth sign in the third house uh, in the with dealing with the person's son. This is a person who uh, really wants order and practicalizing uh, the connections that they have with the people that they grew up with um, and their uh, family members that are kind of distant, not. Uh, this is like extended family. Like, you know, um, you know, there's a very practical approach to when they're, um, conversing with them because third house deals with the communication, the mind, and it's the way people were sub subconsciously programmed as a child. And so they probably lean geared towards things that were more practical and stable and geared towards people who were more practical and logical versus, uh, you know, a like mystical or uh, esoteric. Um, when it comes to spirituality, you know that could go in many different areas. But they prefer things that make sense, that are you know practical communication styles, and conversing with people, which is the connections that you make when you're you know that's the third house energy that that Earth Sun sign person really likes to build practical, stable connections with people. When it, through their form of communication, okay? So, and then let's say you have air. So, air rules the third house. So, if you have air, sun in the third house, these are your, um, your uh, reporters. These are your people who talk about what's going on, what happened. This can be someone who is, you know, who uh, knows everything. Somehow they find out about who got into it, who got together, who was with, you know, what everything. Like they were very, they're very tapped in tune to their environment and their people in the family. These are people who keep the family together because they're in connection with their long distance family still through communicating. How it affects the mental is um, whether or not they were born into families or born into areas where it was a lot of people. People that were born into very social areas like New York or like, you know, places uh, California. I'm from California. I'm from the Bay. But, you know, places like that where there's a lot of people in the schools and everything, There, there's a very higher intellectual mind play in these air people because these air people are coming they're they're being exposed at a young age when it comes to their environments the people they're hanging out with uh their friends family members you know cousins not like your sister and brothers and stuff but like you know the people that you you know, when you leave home, oh, that's my people, that. So when they, if you are exposed to a lot of people, it really influences your mind to tap into different people's forms of communication styles. These are people who have multiverse ways on communicating. They know how to talk to many different kind of people. They're very tapped into their, um, their, the natures of, the natures of, uh, the group and how, they're functioning and it's a very mechanical thing when it comes to the third house. When it comes to air in the third house and your son, you're no you're that's what people see when they when they uh they that's the energy you give off. That's what your kind of purpose is here to uh really uh observe. You're here to observe and bring together people and through your communication. And um the algorithms is anything in between whatever your conversations are that you discuss and things. But you're very tapped in tune to aware and aware of what's going on in your neighborhood or where you work or where you, you know, wherever your foundation is outside of that, you're in an understanding of the area. You're under, you're picking up on consciousnesses. This is collective conscious, okay? And so you're able to verbalize this. You're able to talk about what's going on in the community. You're able to um, to really tap into the higher mental realm and communicate the subconscious energy within that area and that space and location. You were very influenced by the people that you're around. So, yeah, I don't want to, you know, I have a lot of planets to go through. But so last but not least, fire. Let's say you have a fire sun in the third house. This is someone who is very passionate, the jokester, someone who even that earth. Okay, so that earth, earth, people don't understand how practically dry sense of humor, like these third house, oh my God, people with the third house energy, 
these just in general the sun there they can have these are your entertainers they know how to communicate about things that they saw they and grew up seeing and they know how to transform it into a, an expression where people receive it and laugh at it or you know provoke some type of reaction whether it be emotional uh, whatever this case may be but if you have fire there so if you have fire sun your fiery sun is dropped into your third house this is a person who is like um, known in the neighborhood, you know, very popular, uh, cousin or, you know, uh, play cousins or whatever, you know, like you were very popular, very passionate, probably got into a lot of beats or little arguments or even fights in your neighborhood at school because you're so passionate about what it is that you believe in because also remember mental realm deals with belief systems and what you're subconsciously being programmed so however whatever was going on in that second house of values which was your tradition and how you know people were influencing you it comes out in your third house when you start interacting when you leave, jump off the porch and you go out and start to interact with people that is your third house energy that is third house energy now if you have planets there your son being earth excuse me, your son being fire in the third house, you're the type of person when you go jump off the porch and you go outside in the world and you start interacting with people, it's based on uh, uh, from a state of being in charge, being in of power. Because remember, fire is a dominancy. It's masculine energy. It's the energy of, you know, I believe, I am. You know what I mean? This is all this you know, this is what I believe. This is who I am. This is, you know what I mean? And I'm passionate about it. And so people either re repelled you or really attracted to you. You know what I mean? These are popular people too. Okay. So let's move on. So that's sun energy in a nutshell. Okay. Also like, okay, let's move on. Moon. Okay. So you're emotionally like, it's, let's say you have a moon. Your moon is in the third house of communication, of close proximities, of, um, you know, the neighborhood store, you know, the, you have an emotional attachment to these things, even if you're in, your moon is in a practical state, your early upbringing really influenced the way you orchestrate your thoughts. And so this is, I think I get the strong energy to really help the people with the third house moon energy to really help them heal because you know during the childhood during you know while you're young you know what I mean when you're young and you're dealing with people in your environment and you're so tapped in tune and aware because the thing about the third house is people are aware and awoke in their childhood when they're getting all the information and absorbing it from the outside world, outside of home. These are people who are awoke and and they're aware of what's going on when they're when they leave home. And so, if there's been some things that traumatize you, it really influences you and forms your emotions. And so, I just want people that have that third house energy that may have experienced trauma growing up to know. To go back to those memories and heal those memories, okay? Because people that have had trauma in their childhood and that's dealing with, like, you know, being bullied or, like, dealing with people or, you know, um, this is more debilitated. If your moon is more debilitated, um, they don't forget. You know what I'm saying? And it really shapes and molds the way they view the world and the way they view people and the way they view how people are, you know, good or bad or or you know what I mean? And so it's really important for the because the moon is something to be taken serious. It's how you feel. It's your subconscious mind. And when your subconscious mind is dropped in the subconscious in the in the mental house, it's not more it's not it's more of the conscious than the subconscious subconscious is more 12th and 8th house energy but like you know when it's in the conscious mind you know these are things that you form emotional attachment to and it can either be for the better or for worse and so i really want people that have maybe experienced some trauma in their childhood to 
uh, learn how to rise above those situations because those circumstances did not did not make you to be to view the world as a place of um, a bad place, okay? Because the world is not a bad place. It is a hard place because um, the set of laws and rules that we have to abide by outside of our free will due to the universe, these are universal laws that we have to abide by. And then we also incarnate here with a state of um, emotions, we this is like the only planet that really you feel emotions like to this extent where it can cause a reaction you know what i mean and it causes an effect in deeper darker um um emotions stem from bad experiences like you know regret revenge envy things of that nature so it's very important for people to heal those because anywhere the moon falls you got to heal those areas because it remembers moon is water is ruled by water but ruled by cancer my moon is in cancer i know this subcon i know these more under the veil energy when it comes i don't even care if you have earth in your moon as a moon sign if whatever it is, if your moon is falling in your third house, it's important to heal whatever ideologies that were implanted in you that might be causing your life to be the way it is due to your belief systems that you learn from the neighborhood, from the environment, from your friends, from your cousins, from your siblings. You know what I mean? Like this, you know, it was very influential time and you were soaking it up like a sponge emotionally. And so it's, a, it's some healing that needs to be done, I feel, like with these third house debilitated. But if the if it's not as debilitated, it's more support there. There's still that underlying, because, you know, things happen in childhood out of adults' control. Like, we want to protect our children with all of our might, but things happen, you know. And they're, everybody in the world isn't raised the way um, you are. And so this is why I know that uh, even, it, but some people, you know, that goes both ways. You could have been raised in a bad household, and then you go out, and there are good people, verse, and vice versa. You may have been raised in a household full of good people, and then we go out in the world, there's some bad people. And so we, the third house, you can't really control the environmental factors. It really does de depend on how you're in, affected and influenced. Like, But overall, it you know... These type of things really stuck and tr became a truth in your emotional functioning, uh, which is how people were treated and handled you and communicated with you when you were out of the home, you know, and picking up and getting your brain like building a, a conscious mind for yourself, you know. And so there definitely can be some healing done if, if need be. Moving along to Mercury. Now, if you have Mercury in your third house i don't care if it's fire i don't care if it's earth i don't care if it's air i don't care what it is if you have uh your mercury in your third house you are naturally there's good and bad because you were so tapped into the world around you as a kid um because you were very observant you were, when you go to the grocery store, you watched everyone. When you went to places, you know, close home, close to home parks, you know, outside to play, you were the observant one because you were really analyzing the world around you. Mercury deals with analytical mind. Okay. And uh, so you were drawn to and attracted to what, you know, whatever your sun is. So if you have fire, you I mean, excuse me, whatever your Mercury is. If you have fiery Mercury, you were drawn to that type of energy when you were outside, you know, or when you were talking to your families. This is the way you come off and communicate. This is the way your mind functions in things. It's in the area of what's happening outside of you. These are the people, these are your, um, the Mercury in the third house, these are the people who report on other people's lives. These are your reporters. These are your observ observant people. They observe other people and they talk about it. And it could be, you know, good or bad. You know, it could be drama. It could be messy. It could be whatever. And Or it could be very inspirational. It could be, um, it can be as little as someone who um, does work for people like recording or like 
getting people's stories out, journalists, uh, because it's written and spoken word, okay? So these are the people who are really tapped into local events, news. These are events that just popped in my head. So these are your people who go to these local places and they observe things and they talk about what's going on in the world. These are your... You have your Mercury in the third house. You definitely want to get in some type of communication when it deals with your environment, whatever, wherever you are, because you are very aware of this. This is your consciousness. This is what you're perceiving and you're consistently thinking about. These are the things that are, you know, you're aware when you're out in your car driving or taking a walk or riding a bike, whatever, walking your dog. You're very aware and tapped into your environment, okay? You're on a very different level. Some people are very mental and deeper in darker places like eighth house people. You know, third house people, they're more so, it can be deeper dark because you could have Scorpio there. You, you know, you know, you could have um, Pisces there, it, which isn't as dark because the thing about the Scorpio energy is it, it sees the good, the bad, and the ugly. It sees it all. It doesn't just see, you know, a rose as a beautiful rose it see is at like you open the rose ill look at all those bugs in there like you know but it smells good like scorpio see it all and so you know it's all depending on what planet you have in your third house but you know if it's a stellium energy i will get to that towards the end actually um so yeah definitely mercury in the third house these are people who are very tapped into their environment they're the gossipers they're the ones talking about what's going on they're observant um, they know, like they know the world around them. They have an understanding of the world around them. They're very aware of it. And it's not like an emotional attachment, like the moon people who, you know, may have been afflicted or may have been, you know, traumatized from it. The, the, the mind can be objective. It could be whatever you program it to be. And so, you know, these are people who are products of their environment because they, this is what, like the way they talk. The way people dress, you know, the way, you know, what is going on in the environment. These are people who are tapped into the on a higher awareness level, okay? Collective conscious level, okay? Um, now, let's move on. Venus. So, let's say you have Venus in your third house, okay? So, Venus in the third house, you people are extremely uh, attracted to people who are popular and like talk about you know these are your social people your social groups these are the people who enjoy going to places casually chit-chatting and these are the people who are very tapped into um ha uh, uh, the style and grace in which they communicate you know and it really it really matters you know because it matters what is in the Venus because this really will affect the way the communication style is. So, like, let's say you have more of, like, a watery Venus, you know. You know, you're emotionally attract. You're attracted to um, forms of communication or things that are more coming from an emotional state. These are the things that you're attracted to because Venus deals with attraction, desires, like, um, appreciating like you know so if you have a, a watery energy there in your third house you're drawn to those more watery communication styles which is more soothing smooth emotional it matters if you've been through a lot of trauma because you might be attracted to people who are like you know emotionally weak and vulnerable like and when they talk about it, like, you might really heal them. You might really can help people like that, um, you know. And you, you really appreciate an honest person, someone who's, you know, expressing themselves from a state of truth and um, vulnerability and honestly, like, an openness. Like, that's the, you know, you appreciate that. Also, like, if you have more air, uh, like, let's say you have air Venus. If you have an airy Venus... Uh, you're definitely the type of person who is um, drawn to how people dress and how people talk. And you were picking up on those type of things very early on. And you were f weighing out what it is that you like and appreciate and value in people. Because 
the third house deals with that communication, the mental realm. And so if your Venus is there, you're attracted to people who communicate naturally because you are an airy Venus. If you're more fiery Venus, you're attracted to people who you're attracted to people, places and things of like theater where there's some type of like even I think of opera or like some type of entertainment. You know, where there is some communication going on or some, you know, whether it be music. These are your people who are very invested into those realms of um, expression that are local. You know what I mean? These are people who like that kind of social buzz um, and really connect with people and appreciate it. You know, this is higher vibrational things and lighter. It's not like the deeper, darker things. Um and did I, okay, I did. I said, I said, Earth. Um, that's the Earth. Yeah. No, let me just wrap it up. Okay. Yeah. So overall, your Venus, your Venus in the third house, you will love appreciate a person's mind, mental people. You lo you really uh, analyze and observe people from a mental pl plane first before you know appearance and things. Um, that makes up the whole, of course, but overall, you're really looking for people, you're really looking to understand people on a, on a base level of, you know, how they're projecting their self in the world when it comes to their thought forms, and if it's your vibration, oh, you're attracted to that, you're with it, like, it's something that you really appreciate, because this Venus is in a normal Venus, it's not like, you know, the beauty of it all. It's more so the beauty of the mind. These are the people who are very mentally attracted to other people, need mental stimulation to feel some sort of love, value, and appreciation, okay? Moving along to Mars. So if you have Mars in your third house, these are your debaters, your great debaters. These are the people who challenged everything in life. These are the people who went about whatever. They took the steps necessary to get to where they had to go when it comes to things that they want. Like, you know, like they probably express, like, I don't want that teacher. I want Mrs. So-and-so. Like, or I don't want this teacher. I want Mr. Because, you know, it deals with school. Like, or, I, you know, and they really were, they spoke on their desires whether it be they could have been a very shy person it doesn't matter it doesn't matter ultimately they're going to talk to who they love and be like i don't like this or i like this because mars deals with opinions it's the i am even if you have a passive sign there even if you have like a mars and cancer let's say you have a mars and cancer which is the bedibilit debilitated because cancer don't want to be in no fighting position or in no defense you know it wants to be you know like an initiating you know how they feel and and that can become reckless because that's emotions and so you know what I mean? You got, like, let's say you have something more, like, debilitated Mars in your third house. You're argumentative. You, things rub you the wrong way, and you need to talk about it. Like, you, these are people who need to talk. They need to, like, they will say that, too. Like, we need to talk, you know, because things are, like, rambunctious within them. And they need to get it out. And they need things to be addressed. Uh, and, and it's a now. And it's, like... Or else it's going to be an issue because Mars is that energy where it's like willpower, Martian. Okay, these are your warriors. These are your people who, f this is the fight. This is the battle. And so the battle is really dealing with your third house energy. The battle is really dealing with, um, you know, you know, family, cousins, siblings. Uh, the battle is dealing with, you know. Going outside, these are your fighters. These are the ones who went outside and they test anybody. You know, they stand their ground. They stand up for themselves. You know, they stand up for other people. You know, so it could go both. It could go all ways. You know, and so yeah, and like okay, let's move on. <laughs> so um, Mars, let's do Saturn. So okay. So the Saturn in the third house, people, I always say, I always like something. I love Saturn, okay? I have a lot of squares to my Saturn. 
Um, so I, I really understand. It's a learning process for me, but I understand the Saturn energy a lot because it was one of my tests. Uh, it's always going to be a test. Like, it's always prevailing for me. But, like, let's say you have Saturn there. You're definitely, okay, this is structure, you know. Uh, you probably were raised in some type of, um, these are people who are born into areas where there's discipline, family, military family. Um, this is someone who didn't get to do what other kids did or even what their family cousins and things did. Um, play cousins or will play for whatever. Um, they felt as though they were limited from things. They, they felt as though they didn't get certain things that other kids their age did get. Um, because, you know, third house also deals with that, um, childhood and close proximities and areas um you know you probably didn't get to go outside much or you probably didn't really get to you know or you just didn't have any structure and you felt very vulnerable because you felt like anything could happen this is a person who probably grew up with because you got to remember that subconscious energy with the 12th house is i mean excuse me with the third house um with saturn Saturn deals with a lot of subconscious structured karma, things of that n nature. So, you know, this is a person who really felt as though they they needed some so sense of stability. And it is either a very extreme, like they were born into these very hard, strong community families or like church, you know, very structured and forced. And, um, and then... They probably weren't able to speak their mind a lot growing up, you know, or, you know, they probably were very shy to even talk about what's going on or, you know, it's just an awareness that these are people, it's like a stress awareness. Like, you know, these are people who grew up with, these are your, oh, like you see those kids that are just way ahead of their time. They probably didn't really want to go out to places, go to the grocery store and stuff like they were just like, I want to just stay home, you know, or they wanted to do all these things and they couldn't because, you know, just the energy that that was just put in that area of life. These are probably people who had grew up in harsher neighborhoods where it was poverty, poor, like, you know what I mean? Um or they just grew up in areas where, you know, they had the money and that money wasn't the issue. It was just the freedom, the lack of freedom, the lack. It was just like a tenseness all growing up everywhere you go. It was just, you know, and, and you weren't able to really get it out because it's your expression. It's how you communicate. You know, there was probably blocks and limitations on how far your mind can conceive ideas and concepts. And it really takes a lot of practice because I think of Saturn, I think of square, which is just a learning process. It's just, um, you know, so over time, gradually with time and with age and good decisions, you know, you, you start to begin to love the community. You start to understand your family more. You understand the way they are. You you're, you start to be able to express yourself more freely without feeling like you need to analyze or, like, hold it in because you don't want people to take you wrong or a fear of if you say something, something can happen, you know. And so, you know, you get more liberation with time when it comes to you, the way you communicate your your connections with family members and siblings. There could be blockages on you know, you probably didn't have siblings growing up. You probably had siblings that you argue with a lot, you know, and or you didn't get along with or hate it. You know what I mean? And so with time and age, everything will begin to make sense to you because, you know, those though the strict restriction, the limitations, the the um, karmic experiences that you had as a child in the area which you grew up with in your cousins and you know, distant family that over time will fade away because Saturn brings wisdom through trial and error and experience. So through all this time, you will gain wisdom from it. And so it's a good thing. Okay. I know it might not feel like it. When I talk about moon energy or like Saturn energy, I do feel for people. Like I get a little bit in my emotions because, um, 
I intuitively understand, you know, those planets due to my own chart. Like, I think I've told people, I know I've said things about my chart in previous videos, but I have a lot of Saturn energy and like eighth house Scorpio energy and tw my Saturn's in my 12th house, you know, and so I have a lot of like deeper, darker emotions collected conscious wise i'm tapped into um the spectrum of like how people feel when in with those more negative placements i'm i understand that collective consciousness because i had to i was incarnated here to experience those type of experience and get a mastery level of understanding which I, that even has mastery levels too so I feel for people with Saturn anywhere or with, you know, the moon anywhere because it just brings back a lot of what the laws of this universe is, which is the emotional contracts that we uh, sign. And it's like the the feelings are very powerful, you know, and when we incarnate here with the set of uh, contracts dealing with Saturn, you know, we sometimes we're like it. We didn't know what we signed up for you know and but but after it's like oh that was that got that over with you know but living here and experiencing it with that universal law of emotion something that we're you know we have to go experience or feel um it really 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 takes a toll on a person you know what i mean and so i definitely want to just acknowledge that I want to acknowledge to you guys with the Saturn in the third house that all those restrictions that you may have experienced with time, you know, everything will make sense to you of why all those things had to take place. You will become a help, a wisdom, and it will get actually better. Your connections with your family will grow and get better. You know, um, your connection to your outside environment, community, you, you'll, you'll see the beauty in it. You know what I mean? And so it's it's all a process. Moving along to Neptune. Neptune. Okay, Neptune. So okay. So these are your people who whose pastime, okay? Your pastimes was going outside, being in your dream world. You were very imaginative as a kid. You loved storytelling you love people who told you stories this is someone who was very psychically tapped into the people uh neptune is the energy of illusion and creativity and so you guys were probably very gullible and naive as a kid not seeing things from a more structured area like you know saturn sees things for what it is but neptune you know, this is someone who is young and expressing their self from a very authentic place. And they're feeling so free. They're feeling free to where, you know, movies really influenced them as a kid. It really influenced their world. Like, these are people who, um, if you guys watch, like, Disney Channel movies and stuff, you believed in that uh, princess, prince, you happily ever after. Oh, my God. That was, like wow, this is my life and my friends. Like, I know it sounds like crazy, but you got to remember that Neptune is something when it comes to your energy, when it comes to your, your, your mind. Neptune is, a men is in the mental house. Oh my God, you're always going to be prone to disillusions. You're always going to be prone to being in a, a situation where you just want to see the the good or you want to see the fantasy of it all you know these are people who need to who um their outlook is very admire admired but it's not practical sometimes and it could be let's say your neptune is in a practical planet but even practical it's neptune is very strange like it creates illusion and fascination around anything it touches and so there is some type of kind of um, illusions that bring about, you know, you probably were the dreamy one, the goofy one, the silly one, the one that people really didn't take serious. Or you probably were the one who, um, you know, people just really liked it to get lost in, a, in the imagination with you. 
Like, these were the people when, like, your cousins, your friends and stuff, you guys probably had imaginary friends. And, like, um, how that affects you growing up is, you know, you're very creative. You're a very creative person. You're seen for that. People talk, you like to talk about things that are very artsy, what's going on in, like, the world of um, movies and um entertainment and things like that anything fascinating or um anything that's like dealing with created something that's created um a work of art this is things that you like to communicate and talk about because you like and find the beauty in those things and it can be very blinding you know this is a person who whose communication style is very unique in a sense where it's different like it's un it's it's not otherworldly like you know that uranus energy but it's more so like not practical unrealistic you like to talk about things that are far out you know and you were attracted to those type of things you're attracted to you know um learning about it's not really learning like ninth house you were just exposed to it as a kid. You were exposed to it. These are your theater kids. These are your performing arts people who went, you know, to those type of things. And so, yeah, Neptune energy, we, you have to remember, is dealing with illusion. So when you have a disillusion in your house of communication, you are kind of unpractical when it comes to the way you communicate your style, which is not a bad thing if you're in the right area of life. Some Sometimes you got to look at it like, okay, um, you know, you know, if your work or what you do or it, you know, it really encourages your um, abstract way of thinking and communicating, then it serves its purpose. But, you know, some people could be very turned off by your unpracticable thinking, which is something you shouldn't take personal because it's your energy. And your energy is beautiful. You don't want to downplay anything. You want to get yourself where you're supposed to be, which is an us white thing, you know, or talking about it. Create your stories. Be who you are. Be in your illusion, but give it that a time and place. And the white people will attract to you, you know, because I know it's it's really rude when people just, say that you're unpracticable or you don't make sense or you're not making, you know, it, it could be rude unless you have a lot of confidence and self-confidence instilled in you. But typically Neptune in the third house, people grew up with this like sh childlike energy, naive, innocence. And so an imagination always rapid. And so, you know, that can say, people can say mean things to you or, you know, Think about it, you know, like, this is more in a negative light or debilitated, excuse me, versus, you know, someone who is born into a family full of people who in arts, you know, and you're you're able to communicate, do poetry or whatever the case may be, um, just in supporting that. And so, mm-hmm. And so, yeah, that's Neptune. Don't feel bad. Don't feel bad when you hear those things like, oh, they're not practical and things of that nature because you are... Uh, a little bit more than this world is ready for yet. We're elevated into a new time where um, nothing is going to be so structured and rigid and uncomfortable. Everything's going to be accepted, like, eventually, because people are going to start attracting to their tribes. And so don't feel bad about your energy. Live whole in it and complete in it. But there's a time and place for all your energy. So, you know, and if it's stellium there, you know, you really want to be very mindful of, you know, am I, uh, how can I apply some type of form of practicality to my ideas and the way I communicate and what I would like to do and what I like to talk about, you know, people will take you more seriously and you'll attract to the right people. Okay, this video is getting long. All right, now let's move on to, we did Neptune, Uranus, and then I'll do Pluto, and then I'll give you a breakdown. Uranus is the rebellion energy. It's the different energy. As a kid, you were someone who very, who stood out a lot. You were someone who was very, um, 
uh, original and unique, popular, someone that people really enjoyed being around uh, for your authenticity. You or you are very weird, very strange. So weird is a good thing because you're yourself, right? You know, you want to embrace that and not, you know, feel like you said, oh, these are your, you know, gothic people or people who are very extremely expensive expressive the way they communicate is very extremely different and it is unworldly um you know it's it's you know they're ahead of their time these are people who love to communicate about whatever they're interested in these are people who engulf themselves with the connections that they make through communicating and it can it's so different their style of communication they looked at all people as a kids uranus and the third house people they looked at people to see the awkwardness in them. And they liked it that. They noticed the awkwardness in situations. They're, they could be in places and they could, they could understand and pick up on, you know, what's appropriate and what's inappropriate and everything in between. And so they're very observant people who like to talk about uh, what, you know, they could be very quiet to people too. Spending a lot of time observing things and making sense of the world around them. These are your people who bring forth new knowledge. Uh, bring forth. Uh, these are people who are tapped into um, science, like trial and error, testing things out. Um, more so with the groups that they are belonging in, like you know, or their friendships that they have, their siblings, they're the oddball, you know, they're the ones who are always doing things miraculously, and it can be confusing to people because you're unpredictable. Uranus in the third house, people, they're unpredictable, their style and approach to communicating is very different than most people, but it's very accepted because it's so authentically unique. And so this is a, something that's really creative about you guys. I love Uranus. You guys know that. Um, yeah, like I, it's in, it, Uranus falls in my social house of the 11th house. And so I love socially awkward moments with like my peers and stuff. Because it's like, just be yourself. Like, ah. And so, yeah. And I have a Aquarius energy in my Saturn and my Uranus and my Neptune. So... No, no, I have Capricorn there, sorry. So, but it, but my, yeah, don't worry about all that. Anyways, Uranus people, you, if you have your Uranus falling in your third house, you're definitely someone who approaches things from a very unique standpoint, and you're very popular for being different and original in your own way, in your own style, and you don't like to be controlled or told what to do. You don't like you know, that was something you probably didn't really like growing up. It's the authority. You probably did get into some things, rifts with, you know, you know, people. Because, you know, that communication that, you know, you'll you'll express if you don't feel like something's fair. Or if someone's trying to push off a belief system on you or, you know, mm -mm, you're not into that. So then let's move to Pluto. So Pluto in the third house people could be born into families where there's a lot of transformation that it that took place you probably moved around a lot there's a lot of um, environmental awareness that transformed you things that happened in your environment that transformed your whole way of thinking you may have been very naive innocent coming into life and then you you just wake up and realize the deeper darker things of, about life um, and you may have been around communication that was more exposing of darker matters. Also, you may have been born into families that were, you know, there was some type of um, exposure to, you were exposed to things as a kid, like that were transformative. And it can be for better or worse. It could have been things that, you know, made you create your whole mindset and your outlook on life from a very dark place like getting over on people utilizing others knowing how to get what you want from others these are your sharp slick tongue people these are your people who have power in your word it really is a powerful magnet that's put in your communication and and just growing up you were someone that people either didn't like 
or did like, but even when they got close to you, there was an intensity about you. You know, you stood out. You always knew and was aware that you had this intensity. And when you talk, like, people listen. And, you know, you probably feel like a lot of people were funny acting, like, to you. Because you see through things. Pluto and the third house people, they see through things. And this, and they, they see through things when it comes to people's communication. Like, they get senses and hunches. When, when people talk and they really understand a person through communicating. But they can also be very persuasive with their communication the way they um, describe or talk about things. They could be persuasive. They could persuade you to see things from their perspective. Um, and so they're very tapped into other people's minds. This is the psyche. People deal with third house Pluto people. They are... Uh, they're aware of other people's psyches. And so they understand the mental depths of a person. They understand. Um, and then their mind is consistently transforming. Their environment is consistently transforming. There could have been something very traumatic that happened as a kid. Fire, um, evacuation, hurricane. I don't know. Something that just transformed your whole life. But that's on a more debilitated. It could have been like, you know, fame. Like somebody got famous. You moved or you went from rags to riches or you went from rich to poor. It is very interesting, the Pluto energy, when it comes to your third house because that deals with your environment. It deals with the way you communicate, what you choose to talk about. And so, um, you know, it's in an area of life where the energy that's playing out in your third house is attracting this magnet very strong impulsive desire and energy that people pick up on and it's a psychic psyche thing it's a subconscious thing it's something that people either feel very fearful of you or very attracted to you but it's a still a like an, a fear associated because it's like so depth so deep and sometimes people could really not like that. Like, that's too much for me. I don't want to be that deep. I don't want to talk about things that are that deep. I don't want to go that deep into it. And so you guys had to learn how to observe and aware where a person's psyche is and go to their levels. Because Pluto and the third house people can go to the depths with you mentally and really understand, you know. And so, yeah, let's say you got a stellium there. Okay, so your life lesson is to overcome your childhood experiences and traumas realize that you shape the world that you create for yourself yeah you were influenced as a kid by your family by your peers by your social groups by school by the store down the street the grocery store you know you were very much so aware and influenced but you were too aware and influenced whatever it was that karmically needed you to come here and experience a lot of emphasis put on your third house of communication and um f like uh family members you know these are people who get into it with their not mom and well even it could be that it's really dependent on how close they were to you like some people are signed contracts to be with you for a lifetime that's dealing with more fourth house like home like these are people that i you know live with and then Seventh house is your relationship. But when it's third house, this is the way you talk with people. This is what you just choose to talk about. These are the groups that you, your friends that you attract to in your neighborhood. These are just, and now that there's a world within the world, which is the, uni, the internet is a world within this world. Now you're able to even attract to even more of your friends. So it's a different time era to where now it kind of elevated from just like your just close proximities to where your close proximity could be just tapping, getting online and connecting with your friends that you never even met. You know what I'm saying? And so the the energy that's playing out is something for you to learn how to like um, just be aware, but kind of let go of these identity things like you yes you are you know a part a product of your environment in a small state or that's not even how i should say it it's more like third house people gotta learn to 
be their own self. Like, create your own way of thinking of who you are. The world cannot define who you are. You know, you are your own person for a reason. You are your own way for a reason. And so it's very important to be aware of who you are and recreate your reality in your mind of who you are. Because childhood experiences really influenced you and helped and molded you to where you are. So learn to detach from these labels, these titles, and be your own person. Okay? Any questions, let me know down below in the comments. You could contact me in my Gmail. Um, it's universal.love.law at gmail.com. And thank you very much for tuning in to Third House Stellium.